All right. Happy Tuesday. How is everyone? Great. Great? That's what we like to hear. Hey, nice job on the blinds. I think uh, Angie McKeever did that, so I hope now you can see the screen. Our town hall today is packed, so there is a strong possibility that we're going to go over an hour. So we're going to try and keep it there, but my anxiety goes through the roof when we're not on schedule, so we're going to, I'm just going to take a breath and we'll go with it. So we're going to start with Erin. She's going to give us a master plan update. Erin's also going to have a baby in a couple of weeks, so we're so excited for her. Good morning, everybody. I may or may not be here next month for uh, next month's town hall. Um, all right, let's see. So what we have been working on over the last month is mostly um, the healthcare renovation, Project 2.2 as we call it. Um, we are set to finish up construction in about a week from today on the 16th, so just over a week. And um, at that point, we'll open up the, the survey window for the health department to come in and do their licensing inspection. Cross our fingers that they come quickly. And um, as soon as that's done, we'll be moving the new residents into um, the new healthcare center and starting on 2.3 the memory care. Um, we also have a video for you guys today in the master plan update to talk about the bipolar ionization work that we've been doing over the last few weeks. Um, essentially, it's to help with the um, air quality in, in the spaces. It's, it, you'll see in the video, but um, it's a modification to the existing HVAC units that kind of helps clean the air quality. Um, we just finished it in the dining room up here, and we're doing it in all of the HVAC units in 2.2 as well. So we'll take you through some pictures. This is the uh, main floor of the meadows. Obviously, we've got floor protection down as we have our brand new carpet down. Um, but really, we're working on finishes right now and kind of some touch-up items. This is the lobby of the second floor, right outside the resident rooms. We have furniture and artwork in the space as of the last two weeks. Um, same area, but this is on the third floor. And then this is a resident room. Um, again, hanging TVs, hanging artwork, and just kind of putting the final touches on the space. Another photo of a resident room, you'll see um, we've got the, the cover for the HVAC unit sitting there on the floor because we are going through all of the units, adding the bipolar ionization. You can see there's a small blue rectangle um, kind of on the bottom right of that unit, and that is the bipolar ionization device that we'll see in the video here in a second. Before we go into the video, any questions about master plan updates? Have you All ever right. heard someone say, let's go inside to get some fresh air? Probably not, and it's for good reason. According to the EPA, indoor air is often two to five times more polluted than outdoor air. In fact, many senior living buildings could be harmful to resident, staff, and visitor health without us ever knowing. Hidden molds, off-gassing from chemicals or furniture, even people are just a few of the sources that degrade indoor air quality. So it's no wonder we go outside for fresh air. Outdoors naturally occurring ions are everywhere and are constantly working to clean the air. Ions are created with energy from rushing water, crashing waves, and even sunlight. Unfortunately, the concentration of these naturally occurring ions is much lower indoors where particles are often suspended in the air. These particles can include dust, dander, pollen, smoke, and even pathogens such as mold, viruses, and bacteria. The risks associated with inhaling bacteria and viruses may seem obvious, but even common dust and dander can cause respiratory issues or worsen pre-existing conditions such as asthma and allergies. There's still hope for indoor air quality though, thanks to ionization. 
patented needlepoint bipolar ionization technology from Global Plasma Solutions safely introduces ions into the airstream using the airflow in your existing ventilation system as the delivery method. When these ions disperse throughout a space, such as a resident's room or a dining area, they combine with particles suspended in the air. This creates a snowball effect in which particles of opposite polarity begin to cluster together. As these larger clusters pass back through the HVAC return, they're easier to capture in the filtration system. Needlepoint Bipolar Ionization's cleaning process is also effective against pathogens, as contact with ions disrupt pathogen surface proteins, rendering them inactive. Other common indoor air pollutants include VOCs, or volatile organic compounds. There are hundreds of types of VOCs that are created by common items, such as cleaning chemicals, Ionization is effective at tackling VOCs as well as odors, such as those lingering around nearby trash. Through Global Plasma Solutions' patented technology, VOCs and odors are broken down into basic, harmless compounds, leaving the air smelling fresh and clean. You can also feel confident knowing that unlike many other products, Needlepoint Bipolar Ionization's cleaning process will not introduce ozone or other harmful byproducts into the air your residents, staff, and visitors breathe. Today, this technology is trusted to safely clean the air in hundreds of thousands of installations, including senior living buildings, offices, schools, airports, hospitals, and other community spaces around the world. So now we can go inside to get some fresh air. We didn't use direct supply, but we certainly will steal their video. Thanks, Erin. <clears throat> So I feel very fortunate that we were able, as you know, we put this in the Mirrorfield room and the dining rooms um, several months ago. And we now, as Erin just pointed out, have the opportunity to do this in our health center, which just makes me so grateful to be at Friendship Village because it's not um, an inexpensive option, but it is, I think, one thing that we're gonna le we've learned a lot through COVID. This, I think, will be one of those things that we um, are a leader in. And I don't know in any other skilled nursing community that has this in their skilled nursing rooms. So it makes me feel very grateful that we are able to do that for everyone. Keep everyone safe. Okay, we're gonna switch topics a little bit. We, as Jeannie comes up, we are also trying to get you into the health center, the new health center that you just saw. So we're going to work. We obviously can't do anything before next week, but Jeannie and Jess are working on a date, um, hopefully sooner rather than later. And if the surveyors do come that day, we'll have to cancel the event, but we'll be so happy that the surveyors will be here. So we'll work through that. But Jeannie's going to give us a community life update. Good morning. I am super excited to share with you uh, today some events, fun events that are coming up in the month of June and um, a couple beyond. So let's move forward here. Um, we have our Father's Day cookout. We started that last year uh, during COVID and we just liked it so much we decided to continue it um, this year. So on Friday, uh, June 19th at 11.30, we'll be meeting at the outdoor rec area as we did last year. So from 11.30 to 1.30, having a cookout just for our men only. And so I am requesting uh, for those of you that got a pair of crazy socks last year, for you to wear those at our Father's Day uh, cookout. If you weren't here last year, and choose to come, I think I might have a few extra pair of crazy socks for you to wear. So looking forward to that. Um, our annual summer picnic uh, for residents and associates will be on Friday, June 25th from 11 to 1. Um, at the main entrance, we will have a tent and tables and chairs this year. And um, also uh, music, so that will be a fun event as well. Another cookout. Um, we have two happy hours happening within the month. In fact, one is tomorrow evening um, out on the Legacy Patio with Mike Robinson um, from 4 to 5.30. And at the end of the month, uh, we have a jazz trio coming for that happy hour. 
Uh, we have not decided on the location, but I can tell you it's either going to be in Brandywine or the outdoor rec area. That'll be from five to uh, four to five thirty as well, and we'll make sure that you know in plenty of time where we're going to plan to have it. Um, we are happy to bring back um, one of our lifelong learning courses. This is going to be a five-week course. Um, with uh, presidential historian Jerry Deal Cusack. Jerry has been here before to lead some of our courses. And this course is the Roosevelt Women, and it's going to be at when Wednesdays at 1 o'clock starting June 16th through July 14th. And we are excited to announce uh, that there is no limit to the class. So there is a sign-up in the book. So if you're interested, please sign up so we know how many to anticipate. And as part of our Partners in Motion program, um, for those uh, that maybe haven't heard about Partners in Motion, it is a therapy wellness collaboration. And we are working together to do senior fit testing starting the week of June 14th between 2 and 4. We do have a sign up in the book. Um, we, we would like to say this is kind of a mandatory assessment. If you haven't been assessed in the last six months, this is a great way to um, check your health and wellness, uh, well, as part of your, I should say, as part of your health and wellness journey, just to provide a baseline of where you are. Um, I know this was uh, something some of you, well, all of you that are members, so to speak, of Ash Run and Brandywine, it's required to have an assessment. I think it's an important tool uh, for you and for us so we can continue to guide you um, and give suggestions and ideas um, in terms of your um, exercise plan. So again, there's a sign up in the book. And um, I wanted to talk about our quarterly themes. We're almost to our uh, new fiscal year. So the first quarter, um, July through September, is Just Move It. Does it sound familiar, like just do it? You see my little figure here? It's like the, the swoosh. <laughs> so it's just move it. So uh, within this quarter, we're going to be celebrating the Summer Olympics. Of course, we've got all our outdoor rec um, program going, and we'll have some other opportunities to just move it. And then I wanted to share with you our second quarter theme. Um, that's going to be October through December, and it's back in the saddle again. So we have some really, really fun things planned for that. That's going to also include um, our Active Aging Week, which will be this year, um, October 4th, the week of October 4th. So we're no longer in September for Active Aging. We're in October that first week. So we'll be talking more about that as well. And I just wanted to remind you, as I spoke um, a couple of town halls ago, about focusing on uh, certain dimensions of wellness. And we're going to actually start with our physical dimension of wellness um, starting uh, July 5th through August 13th. So you'll be seeing a lot of engagement with our staff members, um, talking about the physical dimension of wellness, doing activities around that as a way to educate not only you, but our staff members and community as a whole. So looking forward to their ideas and the things that they're going to come up with uh, for the physical dimension of wellness. So Seth is getting ready to join me here. We're going to be talking about our Touchtown um, engagement app rollout plan. So um, on May 26th, I got together with several of our residents. There's 13 total. So are any of my ambassadors here? My resident ambassador? Oh, you need to stand, please. Yes. These are um, some of our 13 resident ambassadors who have gotten together um, with us. They have downloaded the Touchtown app. They have looked at it. And um, yesterday, we met with our um, person from um, Touchtown, a representative from Touchtown, and um, these residents had an opportunity to give their feedback about the app and the modules within the app, and uh, it was a very, very productive meeting. And so we will continue uh, to do that uh, until our rollout, and Seth will talk to you a little bit more about that. So we are so appreciative of these ambassadors um, and their um, help 
in putting this app together and uh, making it fun and easy for all of you. So, Seth? Good morning, everyone. So, yes, thank you to our ambassadors. We had a good meeting yesterday. Um, and I think just, I think the immediate feedback was let's push this rollout back a little bit because um, there's a lot of feedback to be had and incorporated. So, um, really, so we moved our kickoff really to the end of J July, and our um, plan will be to have three large community sessions right here in this space, um, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st, and that'll be more of a high-level overview. Um, if you want to flip to the next slide, I'll just kind of show the, the app page there. There we go. So that'll be more of like a high-level overview of all the different uh, modules within our application um, and really focusing in on our interactive modules. So some of the modules like activities, programming, You'll be able to go in there, sign up for a class, sign up for an event. Um, culinary as well will have some interactive functions as far as uh, making a reservation um, for the Riverwalk as an example. So we'll be focusing really on those uh, modules to kind of go through the ins and outs of how they'll work. Um, not only on, your, on the user end, what you guys will see, um, but really how it'll work um, operationally on our end, on the back, back end of things as well. So. Um, we're, and then we're going to follow up the following week. Um, if you go back a couple to the original slide, there we go. Then the next week, we're going to have uh, breakout sessions, and those will be smaller groups. And Jeannie and her team are finalizing the schedule for that, but we're going to do those by floor. So that'll be an opportunity really for one on one training. Bring your devices down. Um, Jeannie, myself, Mikey, Alan, Jill, the whole crew will be here to help you download anything, help you get logged in, um, and really at a one-on-one -on -one level, try to make you all as comfortable as, as possible with the application and your devices. So, um, And then certainly we will have follow-up sessions after that um, for touch points to help uh, support this. So part of our rollout as well, we'll, we'll have an interactive kiosk that we'll be installing. We hope to get that up before the launch of the 19th. Um, and that way any resident can come down, see the interactive uh, app application on a 32 inch flat screen TV that's a touch screen. Um, so you can kind of play around with it and our, we expect to train our front desk team as well on how to utilize the application. So if we need to assist in signing up for an activity or, or uh, make a reservation, we'll be here to help you um, at the front desk as well. So Jane. Okay, yeah, if you wanna to go to the icon slide there. So this will be replacing um, the grapevine. So we currently use the Grapevine kind of as our information hub for residents. This, uh, we will be moving away from the Grapevine. Um, just from our standpoint, it's, it's dated and kind of clunky on the admin side. So Touchdown uh, specializes in senior living uh, applications, resident engagement applications. And we partnered with them to help build out more of an interactive resident engagement platform. So we've kind of gone through the process of building out what icons we want. This, is, this will just be the start. We can adapt um, based on feedback um, as we move forward. So, Pat. It will. And I think that's why it's important we're having these ambassador meetings like we did yesterday, because we got to see half the room had their Androids, half the room had their Apples. Uh, I'm an Android person, so I was trying to help the Apple people. Not the best result there, but I try. Uh, but that, that's what's important with, with our ambassadors and getting that feedback. And we are working out a couple of the kinks, but it should work on any platform, both um, for smartphones, tablets, and desktops. Gene. So what what do you mean, Pat? Is in terms. Uh huh. So there is within this activities icon that you see right here. So when you push on that, you will have 
you go to the date. So let's say, what is today, the 8th? So let's say today is a trip to German Village. So you'll see that on the list, just like you get, um, you get the calendar this week at FVD. So you would go trip, it'll say trip, German Village. You click on it, just like that, and it'll come up and it'll say register. Yeah, and you'll just hit register and it'll say thank you for registering. So it is, I know it, for some it may sound a little overwhelming, I'm telling you, uh, and you can speak to some of our ambassadors here. Um, it is really very user friendly. So we promise we are here to, to help and, um, and within our ambassador group, we have people that are not tech savvy at all up through um, people that are, are more so. So we're getting feedback from all levels of um, tech savviness. Is that a word? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, we are hoping that it will replace, but that is still in the wings, Joe. So we're. Yeah. So we, um, with our partnership with Touchdown, we got like the Cadillac version for the residents, so we can customize and build certain things. Um, but we also purchased the family view. So any of our family members will be able to download the Touchtown app. We'll, we'll make a, we'll roll out. When we roll out, we'll give the um, login information for, for family members to view. And then they'll be able to go in and view, um, I believe it's our activities programming. Announcements and dining. And dining are the three key ones. So um, they'll, any, any of our family members will be able to log in and see what's happening here at Friendship Village of Dublin. Pat. Is this dependent on our Wi-Fi? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're on your smartphone. No. Um, it, it, I mean, if you're connected through, through your Wi-Fi, yes, it is. Um, but if you're on your smartphone and you're using a data plan, then you got the best of both worlds there. So. But don't forget, Spectrum is coming. Yes, so, so this Spectrum will help. Michelle. Are we having individual yes, and that'll be part of our launch as well. Um, the, the question is, uh, will there be individual sign-ins and passwords? So each resident will have a unique uh, login and then a password as well. Um, and we've worked hard to really, so like Works Hub, if you use the Works Hub, it's integrated into this. We're trying to make everything, this is a one-stop hub for, for everything we do here at Friendship Village, if, if we can manage that way, so. Yes, are we eliminating uh, written material like the villager and that type of thing? That is our plan. That is our plan to move away from paper into this uh, platform. Yes, it will take yeah, some it's, time. It's, so it's not going to be a flip of the switch and it's like, you know, night and day, but we're, we're moving towards that. Yes. Yes, yep, so the app can be downloaded to, if you have an iPhone, an Android phone, um, both, so. And it also can be pulled up on a desktop, a laptop, it has a web uh, address as well, so. Yeah, yeah so the question is, um, are we gonna have classes? And that's part of our rollout plan will be three large community rollout high-level views and then um, Jeannie and myself and her team, we're looking to break it down by floor. So it'll be a smaller group where you can bring your device in and we'll help download and, and uh, walk you through it and then have some follow-up subsequent uh, support and training options for you guys. If you have additional questions about Touchtown, Seth and I can stay after t uh, Town Hall and answer any questions so we can move on. So feel free to come up and see us afterwards and we're happy to answer any questions. I didn't even have to pay her for that. Thanks, Judy and Seth. 
This, I think it is a, it is a really exciting initiative. And I think when, when you can touch it and feel it and try it, I think it'll take a little bit of learning, but um, I think everyone will be very pleased with it. All right, Jay's gonna come and give us a culinary update. Good morning. It's great to see all of you again. Glad we're not on any TV up in the room broadcasting over the air. Um, it's much better to see you. A couple of comments from Culinary, and I'll get through this uh, quickly. Uh, we, have, uh, we have increased our capacity in all dining areas of, of Legacy and the Riverwalk. Um, we've upped our uh, reservations in the Riverwalk. That is pretty much operating in a fuller capacity. Um, in the legacy, we have, we have been, we've opened up our seating to 140, uh, so there's pretty much never been a night um, sold out since we've done that. Um, the only thing we're looking to move to is that we're, um, right now we're just staging out our guests and how they come in. So we're still working on that process. Uh, we're going to give it a little more conversation, and then we're going to introduce that. So that is going to be phase two, and um, one of the Pretty much one of the steps we have left is to allow guests into the dining room. So at this time, we're just going to do a little more time, and then we'll offer, um, allow guests in. Um, we are looking at a new concept. Uh, it's not new, but it, we started it last year in COVID to the farmer's market. Um, and basically, we, we, we sourced all the food from a um, local produce vendor, and we sold it out in the courtyard. We're going we're gonna, to, we, this year, through one, a suggestion of one of our residents, we've uh, partnered with a local farmer. Um, his, his name is uh, Taylor Wiggins. Um, he grows things organically on his farm uh, right out in Plain City. Um, it's called From Scratch, LLC. Uh, they're, they're a farmer, and they're growing their produce just for us and a few other people. So we're happy to announce that tomorrow, starting tomorrow, um, he's going to make his first delivery tonight. We're going to run through the process. Uh, we're going to test it out. Now keep in mind that it's not gonna be the full-blown farmer's market that you're used to. Um, it's gonna be a, a farmer's market of fresh from the garden. Um, it's all the stuff that he's growing for us, he's gonna deliver it, and we're gonna grow it. So we're gonna sell it on um, Wednesdays in the, um, in the store. We're gonna try and make a nice setup so you can come down and peruse a little bit. So we got some really good items coming in. Right now we're in the end of the uh, spring season, so the, the varieties are like rhubarb and some lettuces and some uh, baked goods he's gonna bring this time. So uh, we are looking forward to um, the future with this company. Uh, we have, we're, we're focused on locally, you know, to provide you with local produce that you've known from the area. So with that, we're excited to announce that and uh, we look forward to seeing down there and Tim will be um, excited to see you as well. So thank you for everything. What are the hours of the farmer's market? Um, it's going to run the store hours, okay? So currently it's going to start in the morning at approximately 10 o'clock, um, and then they'll close during service hours, um, just due to the, sir, the, uh, you know, the attention we want to serve the people in the uh, dining area, and then we'll reopen for the rest of the day. Uh, we will probably close it around 6. Um, the products are also on a, um, when they're gone, we're, we'll run out of stuff, I'm sure, um, just because it's based on availability of the growing season. Go yep. ahead, Pat. Is it our plan to have more servers in the legacy? Um, currently, the days are fluctuating. Um, right now, the standard protocol is nine servers in the dining room. Not at noon. I'm sorry. Did you say? I didn't understand that. At noon? I, I'll take that offline and I'll answer that afterwards. Um, we generally have four staffed, four to five staff, one doing delivery and four staff. So I'll look into that, but generally there's four on the floor. Thank you. We'll also say that um, in resident council yesterday, we did hear some feedback about the reservation specifically in the legacy. So we'll take a look at that and see what we can do to adjust that given that our staffing is um, a little bit better than it has been, but still not as great as where we want to be. So, okay, Jess is going to come up and give us a health center update. Good morning. Oh, good. Crowd participation. You guys should have all been asking that. So, 
Uh, lots happening in our health center and our new health center. So I don't know who's an avid walker on this campus, but I got to share a little bit of news with the resident association yesterday, and it's coming along beautifully. And so um, I'll start maybe at the bottom then, since I led in with the most exciting news. Our letter of readiness, which is uh, the date we allege the building is ready to be inspected for Project 2.2, our health center is coming, and it's about a week away. And then we go into a nice 60-day window of waiting for our inspectors to show up in a true Ohio Department of Health fashion, announced, and uh, survey the building for occupancy approval. So it's right around the corner. I know we didn't do a ton to the outside, so it kind of still looks like the building that was the Meadows, but the inside is unrecognizably beautiful. Uh, and the last version, if you were in the Meadows, was not a bad looking place. So uh, it's unimaginable. I can't wait to show you all. Rita said it. We are working on an event to get you all in there and take a look. So um, that's our next steps. Uh, staffing updates. So unfortunately, we had our last director of nursing uh, work her last day on the 21st of May, and we worked hard um, to find a great replacement, and I think we've out outdone ourselves. So Ashley, I'll have you stand up and give a wave. Uh, I only have four minutes today, so I will make sure she makes a coming agenda in the next month to introduce herself and some of the wonderful work that um, she's done and the experience that she brings to our team. But Ashley Evans is our new director of nursing. So um, make sure to give her a warm welcome. Sadly, um, it's been a tough year, and our assistant director of nursing uh, had to step down from her position as she's got some family dynamics going and uh, a needed presence in a full-time capacity as a mother. So her last day worked was the 3rd of June, which was last Friday, and we will be looking for her replacement. We are working um, with the HR group and a recruiting agency to find our next stellar leader in that position. So excited to share news with you. Always rapid changes in this community, but it's good to see all the skin on all your faces today. So. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. All right, Angela. And Christina. Yeah. I feel like it's like a welcoming committee. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Uh, so I'm just going to, you can come over okay. here so it's not shining in your face. I'm going to quickly cover some of our fun stuff for the month of May. Um, so it, remember, the employee engagement is how we get our associates of the month. This is Christina, who I'll introduce in a minute. Um, but we review your cards, so keep writing them. They look great. Um, some fun stuff we did in May, we had a frozen ice cream treat day, skilled nursing week, we gave out a cute little lip balm that says our nursing staff is the balm. It's <laughs> a picture of it down there. Lots of candy treats, uh, kiosk recognition for years of service, that's just one of them up there. We did a smoothie day where Seth made his smoothies. Um, we had heroes for our heroes, subs. Um, for those of you that are not from New York. Uh, breakfast, perfect attendance award. Thank you to Ian Utz who supplied us with some tickets to the memorial. So anybody that had um, perfect attendance in May was put into a pool for a raffle. One of our home care gals won that. She was very excited, a golf connoisseur. And then of course we had some pizzas for the staff working on Memorial Day. Is this going to work? And this is Christina. I'm announcing our June Associate of the Month. She was nominated by quite a few residents. So congratulations to her. Thank you yes, very of much. Course. I really appreciate it. That's yeah. very nice. Thank you. So we're so happy. Of course, Christina has been with us for almost two years, and she's made a huge change in the dining room to the service levels that's there. So we are grateful for your service. Thank you. Of course. I appreciate it all. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Jill. Appreciate it. 
Thank you. Um, and then our honorable mentions we share, of course, Todd Shipley, again, with transportation. I mean, Todd just does so many wonderful things. Yusuf Nagadi in our culinary department. And then we actually had a collegiate shout out this time. So Kobe is one of our newer associates. He's a um, in junior in our Dublin schools. Um, and he just, he gets a lot of cards too. He doesn't quite qualify for our associate of the month yet because he hasn't been here a year. But gosh, you guys just love him. So he gets lots of good feedback. So we thought it was good to recognize them through that. So yay to them. Oh, thank you. Oh, and I'm going to quickly just cover this slide. This is um, what we're calling the perfect storm. I mentioned it in last month's town hall, but it's just important to break it down a little bit. So we're, we're having a national staffing crisis, not just an FED crisis. And I thought it'd be helpful, especially for some of you finance-minded people, to see sort of really what it breaks down to from an hourly wage to stay at home right now. So I'll look at the bottom part. So unemployment right now, people are getting $21.50 to stay at home. The additional stimulus check, which now runs through the end of the month, is $8.68 additionally. And then with the tax refund, fund that they're getting because everybody gets a tax break up to a certain amount and then of course people are still getting their annual tax returns that's an additional four dollars and four cents so that breaks down to an hourly wage of thirty four dollars and twenty two cents when our average American worker is typically at 14 to 15 so um, it's a problem <laughs> it's not just us but we are trying our best to do a lot of the other things that I talked about on the first two slides to make our associates feel feel like they are everything to us because they are. So just wanted to share that information. Thank you. And last, we have gotten so much great feedback for our landscaping team. Um, I mean, quite honestly, everybody knows over the past year that that's been one of the things that has been what we've all looked forward to. And so if you didn't know, it's National Gardening Week. And we wanted to take this opportunity to bring our landscape team uh, in and have you all see their lovely faces and personally recognize them. So come on in, guys. They're all in blue. I'm going to tell them to take down their masks because we're used to seeing them without masks outside. <clears throat> yes, On behalf of the residents, we want to recognize them. Throughout the last year, beginning last spring, as we went into some COVID restrictions, we were able to walk outside and see the beauty of spring evolving. During the winter, these were the people who were at 4 a.m. in our parking lots so that other associates could get here and park and clearing the sidewalks for us. So through the worst of winter, they were faithful at very early hours or staying late or being here on the weekends. Uh, this spring, we have seen them prepare the beds, uh, prepare the village gardens for those of us who do garden plots. Um, now there have been planted 8,700 annual plants, and those are sprinkled among innumerable perennials. They've added to the perennials as well as our other ones coming alive. So all residents are thanking you for all of your work. There was a comment this week. A comment from a resident this week was that our landscaping is a masterpiece. So we thank you for being our artists and our heroes. Here are some of the cards that have been written on behalf of this team. So I give those to Andy. And I will read each one of these very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the kind words, Jean. And thank you, everyone. I think this is... Um, the stack says it all. I think these guys are very dedicated. I feel very fortunate. I think Friendship Village is very fortunate that what they do, what we do, and uh, making positive views, I think, influences us all very positively. And um, I, th I think it goes for all associates here, but their work, I appreciate deeply, greatly. I think they're very valued, so thank you. I'd like to go through and say, this is Patrick Aberziz, Charlie of Fever, 
Steve Barry, and Broderick Ball. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're missing Scott Exline today. It just so happened that he had uh, surgery planned. We couldn't get around it. So um, if you see Scott when he returns out and about, please thank him. And um, thank you guys so much. This is very special. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. We love you. All right. I know. All right. So here is Lee. Lee and I have been sorting through this health center name. And Lee and I both don't have children. And now we know why, because we don't want the responsibility of naming anyone. No. So we ended up hiring an outside consultant. We got so many great names from all of you. They just either were used in a different um, community somewhere around the country and or they had maybe, it's really hard to name a health center. I mean, we really love the name, the Meadows, um, but it also is kind of like the pasture and we don't want people to go out. I mean, there's just a lot of thought that goes into all of this. So Lee is going to talk us through kind of what we have done to try and name our health center. So when you go to name something, they you basically four different ways to look at a name. So you look at, is there a geographic reason to name this space? Um, is it historic? Do you name it after someone or after something that happened here? Um, inspirational and aspirational names, you know, wellness and looking at well point or well now and all of those things that talk about when you're talking about a health center or unique to the space. What is it that's unique to our space? And it's something that we're obviously, as the landscaping team just left, something that's very unique to us, our nature and our gardens. And so we started to really look at that. And I was like, you know, we talk a lot about trees here. <laughs> we have Ash Run and we have Birchton. And so, so we were looking at that. We also love our river names. So we have lots of river names here. So River Walk, River's Edge, Spring Water, you know, Sciota, Legacy of Sciota. Um, I was like, no more rivers, no more river names. I can't keep them straight. I don't know how you do it. Um, and then we had the Irish theme, Waterford. Or, and if you look at some of our Kinsale and Tullamore and Donegal, and we have all of those names here in the village as well. So we went through a lot of choices. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so we um, have made a decision that we are going to call our new memory care community Rowan House. I love the reaction. <laughs> so go ahead. So a Rowan tree is a tree. It's Celtic tree. And in a mythology, it means protector. It's a protective tree that if you know anything about mythology or, you know, witchcraft or anything, wands are made out of rowan tree branches, and it is always meant to protect people. So when we heard rowan, I said, nope, that's the memory care. That's the rowan house. So we are going to go with rowan house as our memory care um, name. It makes it sound so much better when you hear the history on it, doesn't it? <laughs> so now we have another tree, and that leads us to what are we going to call our health center? And so if you remember when we started this journey, we wanted something to be at the beginning of the alphabet, because if you ever go to the hospital, well, you're all going to come back to Friendship Village, but if you didn't live at Friendship Village, they would hand you a list. And we want to be at the top of the list for our skilled nursing community. So we have three options, and we're going to tell, talk them through today, and then we're going to actually send out a survey on a piece of paper and you have an opportunity to vote one time and the top votes will be the name of our new health center. So the first one is um, Alderwood. Alder tree, again, going with our tree theme. Um, it's known as the Irish mahogany tree um, and it's very plentiful, uh, carries obviously it's the A name, which is what we're looking for, something at the top of the um, alphabet and we feel like that would be good 
a strong word for the health center. So it would be Alder, Alderwood Health and Rehab. All right, and our next one, Bailey. Bailey means the, or is the outer walls of a castle. Um, so again, we're talking about protective. It's also an Irish word. So we were, and it meets our needs of being at the top of the alphabet. So Bailey, health and rehab would be the next option. And then our last option is EB. And you're all going, what is that word? <laughs> That word, so if everybody knows, we are on the Sells Farm land. And many, many, many things in Dublin are named for the Sells family. What people don't realize is George Sells married uh, Magdalena Eby. And the Eby family was also very prominent here in the, in the Dublin area. And so to honor uh, the other side of the Sells family, we looked at using the word EB, which is different. It's unusual. It's also at the top of the alphabet, and it pays homage to our history here in Dublin. So what do you all think? <laughs> I love the excitement in the room. <laughs> so these are our three options for the health center. Let's just review them real quick. We've got Alderwood Health and Rehab. We've got Bailey Health and Rehab. And we have EB Health and Rehab. So you think about it. You discuss it. You could have some campaigns if you're interested and in what's the other. But we are, um, since we're opening this place next week, we got to name this child that we're having. So um, stay tuned. You'll get your survey tomorrow when you get your community update. And we will see. So I will take any questions whatsoever for anyone who would like to give feedback or questions, and we'll start with Jim. Do we have any of these trees planted here? <laughs> so, no, not yet. <laughs> so Andy, when we were naming this, we said, Andy, <clears throat> can you give us some names of some trees that are in the beginning of the alphabet and have an Irish connotation and are perfect? And the list went on and on. And his response was, that shouldn't be too hard. So we'll work on that. The Rowan, we did look at the, um, the alder and the Rowan. And I think we possibly maybe can plant a couple of the trees. An alder, yes. So... Yeah, <laughs> he says the other ones he'll have to look up himself. We also talked about DARE, D-A-I-R, which is Gaelic for oak. We stretched on a lot of these. So we ended up with these three great options, right? Great. All right, what other questions can we answer for you? Yes, Lou. So the question is, if you live in Friendship Village, independent living, why are we naming the assisted living and the health center and the memory care? And the reason is because typically when you say that you, when you, when you say, where do you live, where do you say? Friendship Village. And so when we talk about assisted living and health center and memory care, we're trying to just put a, a little spin on an institutional setting. So that's why we currently call our health center health center, but we that's traditionally been where it is has been. We traditionally called our assisted living, what was it? The Meadows, and now we call it Waterford. So we're just calling them by, by names. We like to confuse everyone. Yes, Pat. There's lots of the comments was there's she gave her opinion, and EB's a little hard to say. Um, so we're, we'll see what everyone has to say on it. I personally, we all have different opinions. We won't tell you what our opinions are on that, but uh, we all have very strong opinions on these. So like all of you, I'm sure. So what other questions can we answer on Touchtown, on our culinary piece, on our health center? Yes, Jane. So 
So the comment is, when do you think we'll be able to allow or have greet guests um, in our dining rooms again? And really at this point, it's more of a staffing issue. So I'd like to get the reservations removed and see how we do with that. And then the next step would be to have people in, not Friday, but hopefully before July. Yes, pardon me? <laughs> well, we can also serve outside. So if you wanna eat in the cafe, that's an option. You can grab and we'll serve you outside. That's what we've been doing. We have a couple marketing events. We've been having people eat outside and you're not served. We'll, we'll bring you your meal outside. You can come in and get it and then eat outside. Thank you for the point on the good serve. Yes, Barb. So the comment is on the ionization, have we considered putting one in the new spa where a lot of the smells are? And the, and the answer is yes, but at this point, they're not... Um, they're not $100, they're multiple thousands of dollars to do. And in this room, we have seven machines because that's the size of what it is. So in due time, I think it will become part of our, our plant. Uh, but at this point, we're gonna stick with the, the large areas. Um, but the, the spa actually does make a lot of sense from the VOC, so we can put that on the list. We are obviously doing the health center. We'd like to do Waterford next. Um, so that'll be in the plans for that. Yes, Mr. Belleville. Are there any updates on Spectrum? And the answer is, I don't know that. Um, I know that Tom has been working through what the steps are. I know we had a discussion yesterday of how many apartments we have on the campus to give to Spectrum. So it is progressing, um, but I do not know if there's any specific updates I'll ask. And if there are, we'll communicate them. Thank you. Yes, Pat. Would I give consideration to having lunches with Rita again? Yes, I would love to do that. So um, we can get that on the calendar. Danielle can help. We'll get a sign-up sheet going on that probably once a month. We can do that. That'd be perfect. I would love that. It'd be fun to see everyone. What other questions? Yes, Pat. So Pat's question or comment, inquiry rather, is about the protocol required in the health center and our Waterford Place Assisted Living in terms of visitors being escorted. I can send the regulatory language. It's, it is a black and white written requirement um, just under visitor protocol. So some main components are screening, scheduling, and escorting. So what's the point? Sure, so the comment is it's, it's an inconvenience to those that live here. But remember, in the state of Ohio, there's just shy of a thousand licensed nursing homes. And so everybody that is not a resident of that facility becomes a visitor. And so they haven't delineated different categories of visitors. If you don't live in the health center, you just, you fall under the umbrella of a visitor. And the language is quite frank in saying that any visitor has to be escorted. We're, we're, we are hopeful. We know it's taxing on visitors. It's taxing on the staff. We're hopeful it'll change. And when it does, we'll let you know. Jess will send it to you specifically, Pat. We can send it. The rules sometimes are, are uh, fun and exciting and the hoops are pretty high and we, uh, we, we could comment on that, but we won't. Okay, one more question. No one has a question? 
All right. Well, I can't wait to hear your feedback on the names. And thank you again to all the ambassadors, the Touchtown ambassadors, to helping us get that rolled in. And I hope you all have a lovely day.